This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 394. Is it possible to target fat loss to specific body parts? Part two, by Jillian Kubala with Healthline.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, reading you some of the most popular health and fitness blogs out there with permission from the authors. So today's post is a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here or skipping around, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. That's episode 393. And so this week, we're kind of rolling with the theme of fat loss and helping you sculpt your body so it looks the way you want with time, of course. So let's continue that trend and hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Is it possible to target fat loss to specific body parts? Part two by Jillian Kubala with Healthline.com. The difference between spot fat reduction and targeted toning. Although spot fat reduction is most likely to be ineffective at burning fat in specific body parts, targeting troublesome areas by toning the underlying muscle can have beneficial results. While you can't necessarily choose where your body loses fat, you can choose where you want to look more toned and defined. That being said, it's important to combine targeted toning exercises with cardio workouts in order to burn fat. It's true that muscles are strengthened and defined by toning exercises like abdominal moves and hamstring curls. However, these exercises don't burn a ton of calories. For instance, doing lots of ab exercises will result in stronger stomach muscles, but you won't see definition in that area unless you lose overall body weight. This is why cardio, whole body workouts, and a healthy diet are necessary to truly see results. Summary. Though targeted toning exercises will strengthen and build muscles, in order to see definition, weight must be lost through calorie-burning workouts and a healthy diet. How to reduce fat and tone problem areas. Although spot reduction may not be the best use of your time, many evidence-based methods can help you lose fat and tone your entire body. For example, High-intensity workouts and exercises that engage the entire body have been shown to be most effective at shedding pounds. The best exercises for overall fat reduction include 1. Cardiovascular exercise. Cardio, like running and cycling, uses large muscle groups and has been proven to be effective at torching calories. It may be particularly effective at melting stubborn belly fat. 2. High-intensity interval training, or HIIT. HIIT involves short periods of intense activity immediately followed by a recovery period. Studies show HIIT may be more effective at burning fat than steady-state cardio. Three, whole body exercises. Instead of focusing on one area of the body, whole body exercise like burpees have been shown to burn more calories and lead to more fat loss than targeted muscle toning exercises. Four, combining exercises. Combining resistance training and cardiovascular exercise has been shown to be more effective at shedding pounds than just focusing on one type of exercise. High-intensity training, whole body movements, and cardiovascular exercise are very effective for losing weight and toning up. If you aren't able to participate in the activities I just mentioned, there are many other ways to effectively lose weight and tone up. For example, low-impact exercises like swimming and walking have been shown to be extremely effective for weight loss and are easy to do. Summary, adding high-intensity training and cardiovascular exercise to your routine will likely result in overall fat loss. However, simple exercises like brisk walking or swimming laps can also be effective. Diet is key when trying to lose body fat. While increasing overall activity and adding new exercises to your daily routine is important for weight loss and your overall health, Following a healthy meal plan is key when trying to shed body fat. In fact, choosing unhealthy foods or overeating can undo some of the hard work in the gym. Studies have shown that exercise alone is not effective for weight loss unless a conscious effort is made to control calorie intake and make healthy food choices. To lose weight and keep it off, combine the following diet tips with an exercise routine. One, control your portions. Keeping portion sizes in check is key when trying to lose weight. One way to reduce your food portions is to use smaller plates or measure out serving sizes to train your eye. Two, fill up on fiber. Foods high in fiber, such as veggies, beans, fruits, and oats, make you feel fuller and can reduce overeating. 
eating a fiber-rich salad before your meals is an effective way to shed pounds. Three, limit processed foods and added sugar. Cutting back on processed foods like candy, chips, cakes, and fast food is a must for weight loss. Ditching sugary drinks like soda, juice, and sports drinks can help as well. And four, eat protein-rich foods. Protein helps keep you feeling full and may help reduce overeating. Studies have shown that eating a protein-rich breakfast can reduce snacking throughout the day and help you lose weight. Following a healthy meal plan that includes lots of fiber, healthy fats, and protein in controlled portions is a great way to slim down. Furthermore, in order to lose weight, it's important to create an overall calorie deficit. Eating healthy, minimally processed foods is the best way to do this. Although overeating is most often associated with unhealthy foods like cookies, chips, and ice cream, it is possible to eat too many healthy foods as well. This is why controlling portion sizes and having a healthy awareness of both your hunger and your level of fullness is important. Summary. Following a healthy meal plan and creating a calorie deficit are crucial for weight loss. Limiting processed foods, eating more protein and fiber, and practicing portion control are all evidence-based ways to lose weight. The bottom line. Many people want a quick and easy way to lose fat, especially in troublesome areas like the hips, belly, arms, and thighs. Spot fat reduction has been shown to be ineffective in many studies. Luckily, there are proven ways to lose body fat and keep it off. While resistance training may strengthen, build, and tone muscle in a targeted area, a healthy diet and calorie-burning activities are necessary to burn fat and get that defined look. Ultimately, focusing on working towards a healthier, more toned body overall may be more beneficial than attempting to lose fat in one particular area. With a little bit of hard work and dedication in both the gym and kitchen, you can achieve your weight loss goals. You just listened to part two of the post titled, Is It Possible to Target Fat Loss to Specific Body Parts? by Jillian Kubala with Healthline.com. I love that Jillian mentioned combining exercises, meaning combining resistance training and cardiovascular exercise. Now, I only really recommend folks that are intermediate or advanced do this. This is because it can be overwhelming or kind of a shock to a newbie's body if they try and combine exercises, and that might lead to injury. But if you've been working out for a bit and are pretty comfortable, one of the ways you can increase your fat burning is to first do some strength training. So if you're at the gym, for example, hit the weights first. Maybe do some upper body exercises like bench press or shoulder press or work on your arms, bicep and tricep moves. And then once you've done that, if you're not super fatigued, head over to the cardio section of the gym. Jump on the bike, walk on the treadmill, go for a jog, use the elliptical, whatever. By doing these exercises in this order, you will actually help your body burn more fat. There's a physiological mechanism behind why this happens. It takes a little time for me to describe. So I won't describe it here, but trust me, it does happen. Now again, the order is specific. You've got to do your resistance training first and then do your cardio after. If you do the cardio first and then try and do some resistance training after the cardio, you'll probably find that you're gassed and you probably won't be able to lift as heavy. Now really quickly, before I go, if you want to show some support for our podcast, there are many ways to help out, both free and otherwise come by oldpodcast.com slash support to check it out. Anything listed there would be a huge help. That'll do it for today. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for contributing in any way you can. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I'll be back here tomorrow for a Friday Q&A show. So stay tuned for that where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show, and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com 
That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.